Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the opening ceremonies for the 2021 Starry Night, the Walk to Cure Childhood Brain Tumors. My name is Bob McNamara, and I'm the National Director for Fundraising and Community Engagement with the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. We are so excited to be getting back to business and planning this year's Starry Night. Thank you all for joining us this evening. And what a jam-packed evening we have for you. We have stars, we have volunteers, we have fundraisers, and we have some really special entertainment that's going to close out this evening. So stay with us until the very end. You're not going to want to miss a minute of it. And to start things off, please allow me to introduce you to Courtney Davies, President and CEO of the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. Well, thank you, Bob. It is an honor to welcome stars, families, volunteers, donors, and supporters to the 2021 Starry Night Opening Ceremony. It is an honor to serve as the President and CEO of PBTF, an organization that is serving as a leader in the brain tumor and childhood cancer communities. Our mission of Care, Cure, Thrive reflects our commitment to collaborate, to partner with medical institutions, uh, other like-minded organizations, families, individuals, so that every child diagnosed with a brain tumor has an opportunity to fight for their dreams and not just for their lives. Our two main program areas of research uh, and family support serve uh, our mission of care, allowing us to empower families wherever they are in their journey, offering patient and family education, economic relief, emotional support. When it comes to cure, we provide strategic leadership, uh, funding leadership to address gaps in the research and the drug development pipeline. And we are committed to accelerating the life altering therapies needed to improve the lives of our kids today. And thrive. Well, Starry Night community, you know how important it is to provide a community of support, a welcoming community, community to support families on their journey from diagnosis, through treatment and beyond. Starry Night is critical to the work that we do. And so tonight's program, you're going to hear from individuals who believe that very fact. And you're gonna hear from stars, you're gonna hear from top fundraisers, volunteers, you're certainly gonna hear from PBTF staff, as I said, all underscoring the critical role that Starry Night plays in enabling us to propel mission forward. Brain Tumor Awareness Month is just a few days away. And so I think it's perfect that we are kicking off Starry Night tonight. I know that you're in great hands. I'm gonna turn it back to Bob, who is gonna uh, further motivate us. And well, without further ado, I'm gonna pass it back to you, Bob. Thank you, Courtney. All of us here at the PBTF are so grateful for the leadership that you have provided during this past difficult year. And we're really excited about the direction and vision that you've laid out for this organization. We're expecting some big things. And Starry Night is a critical piece how we're going to deliver on that mission. Starry Night is a walk just like a lot of other walks that you may have attended. People come together and walk in solidarity for a common cause. They fundraise, they invite friends to come with them, and they ask people to support them while they do so. And we do all those things too. But Starry Night is so much more. Yes, it's a community event like those other ones, but it is a coming together of brain tumor families in support of each other. And it culminates in the lantern lighting ceremony, which makes our Starry Night. We light lanterns for all of our stars, the children who've been diagnosed with a brain tumor. We light blue lanterns for those children who have lost their battle. We light yellow lanterns for all the children who are currently fighting brain tumors. And we light white lanterns for all of us who support those children and their families. All the people who come together to walk, to cure childhood brain tumors. So let's hear first from some very special people about what makes Starry Night so special. 
and why it is so important for us to continue to do these events. I was diagnosed with my brain tumor at 14 months of age, and I started chemo when I was five. Um, in March of 2015, we went and got our MRI done, and we found out that he had a brain tumor, and that was the reason for his head tilt. They found a tumor, so it was an accidental finding. Um, and then we just watched it for about two years. I was diagnosed with a um, brainstem glioma. My kind of cancer is called anaplastic ependymoma, and it's the um, highest grade, like one, two, and three. I have three. It's tough just to have a waiting game knowing that it's there, and every time he grows, it grows. When that happened that year, I. I started looking for resources to help me out, and I found the Starry Night Walk online. PBTF, like hearing their name because they were helping us out a lot while I was in Houston getting radiation. When you're in the trenches, the support that the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation provides is so crucial to that family that's fighting. They've really assisted me in different ways, but it mainly is primarily looking over the brain tumor. I love Starry Night because it's a nighttime walk and it's a great way to raise funds for the Brain Tumor Foundation. I did the 5K and I ran it and finished it. And once I was done, I was walking around and I saw all these little kids wearing the Starry Night shirt. It said Star on the back. And I went over and hugged them and never met them before. And I felt like they were my little brothers and sisters even though I didn't know them. The start to the walk starts off like so crazy, you know, like wild and crazy. Kids are running around, bouncy houses. But then once you switch over into the, um, the ceremony part of it, like everybody just kind of calms. We do the lantern lighting ceremony and that always, that means a lot. And sometimes it's hard to sit through the lantern lighting ceremony. Um, it makes me feel really involved. Like there's a community, um, it helps you not feel so alone in your journey because you know that other people are going through the same things with you and you have stuff to relate to. The first year I sang um, was during the, light, the lantern lighting ceremony. And so when I get up on stage, all the lanterns behind me were dark and I couldn't see them. I just saw the families of eternal stars and stars and um, lighting their lanterns. And, uh, but I couldn't see the lantern yet. And then when I got off stage to light my own lantern, I, there's just this wall of lanterns lit. And it was a very emotional thing. The foundation is not only trying to find a cure, it's also trying to put confidence and love in each family and child that's suffering with a brain tumor with passion and love. So it gives everyone a sense of hope. In 2020, everyone had to adjust, and we still are. Due to the pandemic, we had to move all of our events to a virtual concept. And we felt that that was pretty successful given the circumstances. Thankfully, due to all of you and so many others, the PBTF has been able to weather the storm pretty well, and we continue to serve our mission in meaningful ways. Some highlights from 2020 include our commitment to the Butterfly Fund our financial support program for families in treatment, and our ability to increase that fund at a time when our families needed it the most. We also had success with a phase three clinical trial that is measuring the effects of target therapies and hopefully leading to less invasive treatments in the future. We also launched our peer-to-peer -peer mentor program nationwide, providing much needed resources for families who just need to talk to somebody who's been in their shoes to talk to somebody who's walked their walk and who has faced some of the decisions that they have to make. Our commitment is to continue to build upon those successes. And to do that, we need all of you. So what does Starry Night look like in 2021? First, it is our intention to bring back our traditional in-person events where we can, pending COVID regulations and protocols at the time. But we know that that doesn't work for everyone. Right? So many of us have health issues that make COVID more severe than to others. But especially our star families have had to be extremely careful during the pandemic because of the highly compromised immune systems of a child in treatment. 
We completely respect that. In addition, many of you may not be in a city where we have traditionally held an in-person event. So how do we respect all of those things, understand all those things, and build a successful program? Well, we take those things that worked last year as part of our virtual model, and we combine them with those things that we love about our in-person events. And what we have is a hybrid that allows people to participate in an actual event or to create their own to do something with their bubble or with their family and friends in their own communities in ways that are safe and socially distant. We want everyone to make a commitment to walk on Saturday, October 2nd. All four of our in-person events will happen that day. Those events will take place in Atlanta, Boston, Chicago, and the NC Triangle area. Those are our traditional markets and pending COVID, we will hold those events and they will look similar to the Starry Nights that we've had for many years and that those communities have come to love. As always, you register online, start building your team, and setting your fundraising goal, and get started. For everyone else, and those yet not comfortable being in a large outdoor gathering, we encourage you to have your own Starry Night. Bring together your families and friends and walk in your neighborhood, at a local park or at a trail, on Saturday, October 2nd. We want you to build your own fundraising teams. We want you to register online at mystarrynight.org. Invite whatever groups that you are comfortable with to join you. And for any team that raises $2,500 or more, we will send you your own lanterns to lighten your community. In addition, we will be live streaming that evening from one of our four events so that you can experience the community and the power of the lantern lining virtually as well. Ultimately, we want you to be creative and have fun and create your own Starry Night. Personalize it, make it special to you. Maybe instead of walking your roller skate, or maybe everyone needs to wear a pink tutu. It is not for us to decide or to judge. We just want you to build your own Starry Night community wherever you are. And of course, anyone who's new to Starry Night, our team is here to support you. Just let us know what you're thinking and what you need help with. And remember, there are a lot of ways that you can make an impact. If you are a person who has a passion for our mission, or if you are a parent who has a child who is your own star, your story and that passion is all you need to build energy and a community to fight against childhood brain tumor. So let's hear from two different guests who are going about Starry Night in completely different ways. One is a traditional model and another who is thinking out of the box. Hi, my name is Camille Connor and I'm the captain of the Caroline's Crusader Starry Night team in Atlanta. In 2014, our daughter Caroline was diagnosed with a juvenile polycytic astrocytoma. Like most parents in the situation, my husband and I were frozen in our paths. It was like our world completely stopped. Never did we ever expect to hear that our daughter had a brain tumor. After several months of treatment and a partial resection in 2015, we got another bit of devastating news. The tumor metastasized. The 2% chance that a grade one JPA metastasized happened to us. This was like a second diagnosis and we were still getting used to the first diagnosis. After quite a bit of crying, quite a bit of asking why me, why her, and a little bit of anger. And I felt like every direction we were turning, I was losing control. I really didn't have any control to begin with. This was about the time that I decided to accept Caroline's diagnosis and I stopped asking why and started fighting. Of all of the things in this journey, something I can do is fight for a cause. Remembering these events is what led me back to the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. I was looking for something that I could do that would impact this journey and after research and confirming that PBTF's mission and vision were aligned to our mission, I found Starry Night in Atlanta. 
The event was perfect to gather together with our closest family and friends and honor all of the children with this disease, but to also feel a sense of community and togetherness with others also fighting. Coming together in Atlanta to celebrate, to honor, and to remember children with brain tumors is honestly an amazing and humbling experience. The first year I became team captain, I did it with very little expectation. I didn't have any expectations to raise money. I wasn't sure who would join me. I just wanted to go enjoy the event and bring a few friends along. My closest friends, those who have made Caroline's journey their own, rallied with me and without much push at all, we raised $5,000. As each year has progressed, both with Caroline's need to get on research medications, but also with our growing community of supporters, I've raised the goal. Every year I raise it and every year I meet, we meet it. I've never been a fundraiser. I don't have a professional background in marketing. All I have is a daughter with a brain tumor, a strong passion to find a cure and a slight competitive streak. We have a journey that nobody wants to face and I've learned that people want to help. They want to be part of the journey and this is one way that they can be. People also wanna help us meet our goals. And because of this, our team sets many milestones. And when we get close to each mini milestone, we get pumped up, we get excited, we get energized. And there's always three or four people that swoop in to take us over the goal line. These small wins bring energy and excitement along the way and we celebrate. So this is how we reached our 20,000 a couple of years ago. It's also important to acknowledge that everyone has struggles and just because this is our mission doesn't mean it's everybody's mission. I will be creating a little competition among our small business owners with the hopes that we can increase their business while also raising money for the cause. I learned about Starry Night roughly two years ago, but the impact it made on me was profound. I quickly realized how powerful the program is, its ability to raise awareness and support for critical and essential research. The journey to a cure will take more than we can fundraise in one night, that's without a doubt. But we're doing everything we can to be one step closer to a cure. The Starry Night event was not offered in Kannapolis or even the, the Charlotte area. So we at the Cannonballers have decided to bring the event to our region. By integrating our Starry Night with a baseball game this season, we feel it's an amazing twist that will offer an incredible experience to the families going through their tremendous journey right now here in our community. So what will our Starry Night look like? Well, for starters, all of our baseball players will be wearing a special jersey that features the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation star. After the conclusion of the game, and before a fireworks extravaganza, we'll be hosting our lantern ceremony in front of a captive sellout crowd. The families will be welcomed onto the field to light their blue and yellow lanterns along the base pass, and the outfield will be filled with white lanterns as a sign of support and love. It will be an incredible night, an incredible sight that many will never forget. For me, I feel the most memorable part of the night will be when myself and hundreds of others light their white lanterns. It'll be an amazing display of support. Um, it'll show all the families in attendance that they don't walk alone in their journey. We are working towards a world without pediatric brain tumors. We're fighting for a cure, and we're fighting with the 28,000 children and teens living with a disease in the United States. We can't wait to spread endless amounts of love and hope throughout our community. See, it can be done. Whether you are new to Starry Night or a veteran like Camille or whether you're just a baseball team, everyone can be part of Starry Night. We hope that you will join us this year and get out and let everyone know why you are walking on October 2nd.
And October 2nd seems like a long ways away, doesn't it? So why are we starting things tonight? Because Saturday is May 1st, and that's the beginning of Brain Tumor Awareness Month. And our goal this month is to let everyone know why we do what we do. As things open up, September and October are going to be crazy, right? Everybody's going to be doing activities that, are, that have been postponed. So we want you to make that commitment early and to use the platform of Brain Tumor Awareness Month to ask others to make that commitment with you, to get it on their calendar, to hold October 2nd as the day that they're going to get out and walk to help cure childhood brain tumors. So register today and get your teammates to register. And let's save the date. Our theme for this Brain Tumor Awareness Month is that pediatric brain tumors have a name. It is the name of those stars who fight this terrible disease. Cassidy, Abigail, Tommy. It is the name of stars who will live on forever. Noah, Patrick, Colby. Hope also has a name. It is your name. It's my name. It's the names of all the people who give hope to star families. People like Marianne and Lydia and Brian and so many more. All of us who fight to build a world without childhood brain tumors. This fight is personal and we need to name that. And that's why we're kicking things off now. To align ourselves with this message. To ask others to put their names to the fight. To make that commitment. That is the power of Starry Night. It's not just walking to support a cause. It is the community lighting lanterns that makes the experience personal. It's a sharing of emotion. It's a pledge to these families that we will build a world without childhood brain tumors. Jonah was diagnosed in July of 2015 and we really were in kind of a whirlwind of early diagnosis and treatment and it was actually somebody from our community here uh, who had said, hey, there's this organization called PBTF and they're doing this walk called the Starry Night Walk. Can I start a team for Jonah? My son Noah Willis was just a month shy of turning three when he was diagnosed with medulloblastoma, a um, form of brain cancer. After surgery, he lost his ability to speak and basically walk. He was able to regain that. I think Lauren was a big part of that because you helped him play. You, he you always know. took my toys and run. Yeah. That's, that's right. what his hobby was. <laughs> Team Noah was developed as our son was losing his battle. It was a way for us to put that energy toward fundraising in his memory. One of the ways we did that was getting involved with the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation Starry Night. We really didn't even know what to expect when we were going. It's an incredible thing to see several hundred people out there for that cause, for that day, to say, this is how we're going to spend our time, this is how we're going to build community, and this is how we put an end to this disease. Starry Night is a great opportunity for our community to have a rallying point. The first year Jonah wasn't there because he was in hospital, and then the second year he had just finished treatment and come out of the hospital and was this bald little skinny boy um, who really had a hard time managing the mobility of it. And then this past year, you know, he's got a full head of hair, he's filled out, he's looking good. And I think that also supports our community to see, wow, what we're doing helps kids like Jonah get better. We've done Starry Night now for three years, and each year it's grown. Our team has grown, our amount that we fundraised for the organization has grown. No matter what, there's plenty of ways to get involved in Starry Night. You can get part of a team, you can run, you can walk, or you can just show up and cheer people at the finish line. For Starry Night, when you get there, there's a bunch of games, fun things for kids to do, families to do. There's a little kids dash. There's other activities to bring the families together, and really a lot of people bring large communities together that are supporting their families. The gentleman who drove the pace car, he came up to Jonah and said, hey, do you want to ride in the pace car? Without missing a beat. He was like, absolutely. 
The real pinnacle of the night is, is near the end. Once the walking and running is done, we really come to a very emotional time where it's a lantern lighting. And there are three different colored lanterns. There is a yellow lantern for all the current stars who are currently battling brain tumors. Then there's blue lanterns that are for the eternal stars, those that have lost the battle. And then there are white stars, which are all the stars of the community and the support of people that come. It's a really impactful thing to see at the end of the evening when the dusk happens and it gets dark and you see this whole wall of lanterns lit up. And seeing the masses of people um, coming and supporting and running and donating their money um, and raising funds for their own sort of run from their friends and their family. Um, it's so encouraging knowing there's hope ahead um, and knowing that there's a possibility of a cure and with more of these events and more people coming then there's a greater likelihood that we will cure this thing. It's a mountaintop experience, it really is. To just see how people can step out and look at the uncomfortable, difficult situation that it is and turn it into something beautiful. I'm truly humbled to share my experiences with the Starry Night Campaign and the importance of the White Lantern. At the event, as I walked around the grounds, I noticed kids of all ages wearing yellow shirts and quickly realized that these are our stars those that could be there with us that day. They had the joy in their heart and acted like nothing bothered them. The families were able to interact and share stories. I quickly realized this was not an ordinary 5K, that the run itself was just a background to a larger community gathering. That community being our stars and star families, as well as their supporters. And as I listened to the speakers, I was struck by one young lady, Jessica Blankenship, who spoke about her journey and the appreciation for her PBTF family. That was my draw. Then came the lantern lighting ceremony. Oh man, was that the best. Uh, tears running down my face as I watched survivors hang yellow lanterns and moms and dads hanging blue for their eternal stars. Then it was my turn to hang a white lantern, which felt irrelevant as I walked up to the wall. But when I did, I stepped back to look. I began to realize that the more white lanterns that are hung, the greater the possibility of finding a cure and providing support to the families. I was now a community member wrapping my heart and arms around the stars and their families. Remembering the White Lantern symbolizes community support of our stars and eternal stars and reassures the family that they are not walking alone in their journey. The more White Lanterns that surround the yellow and blue, the better chance we can reduce the colors and the more love and hope we can provide. I'll be lighting a White Lantern on October 2nd for our PBTF community. Hi, uh, my name is Chase Jones, and I am a board member for the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. Uh, I am also a brain tumor survivor. I was diagnosed when I was 18 years old, and I'm happy to say that I am many, many years uh, considered a survivor because of the efforts that those before me have put in to the research and the community that is made from the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. And that's why I'm here to say, Thank you. But also really what signals the absolute definition of lighting a gold lantern and the significance of what that means to me. It really comes down to two things. Um, the first is beyond hope, it's impact. There's 28,000 current survivors of pediatric brain tumors living in the U.S. right now, and I am one of them. And the reason that we are survivors is because there's impact that's evidence. And so every time you see a gold lantern, you can know that you right now are making that impact way beyond hope. I'm here because somebody gave back before me. But I think secondly, what it represents to me is the opportunity. It's this possibility, this wonder of what you can be doing to make sure that there are more voices just like mine represented every single day. I'm so grateful for each and every one of you on the other side of this, but I am so thankful that you wanted to show up, make an impact, provide the hope that keeps me going, but also knowing that there's a sense of opportunity and wonder that you alone are providing to each and every gold lantern represented today. Thank you so much. Hi, I'm Tia Hope, and my daughter, Amber Roberts, 
is an eternal star with a pediatric brain tumor foundation. Our experience with Starry Night started in uh, 2017 because that was the year Amber was diagnosed with um, anaplastic astrocytoma. Um, she, despite all the challenges she faced, every day for her started with a very contagious smile and a super positive attitude. More often than not, Amber was my strength through all of her journey. Starry Night, I really enjoyed because it was a time that Amber was able to not focus on the challenges she faced due to the brain tumor. She was able to have fun and around people that unfortunately had a brain tumor in common. Amber became an eternal star in February 2018. Uh, a few months before she graduated high school and a few months before she turned 18. But even through her worst of times, she was still positive. And I thank the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation for being there every step of the way with me. I'm very happy to share Amber's story and her journey. If it'll help someone to understand and realize how important the Pediatric Brain Tomb Foundation is and how important Starry Night is to funding for the Pediatric Brain Tomb Foundation. Hi everyone, my name is Michelle Canavan, and along with my husband John, we are the captains of our son's Starry Night team. Our son Connor is the true star of our team, and the reason that we come back year after year to the Starry Night Walks and to help raise money and awareness for the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation. Our son Connor was first diagnosed in October of 2017 with an atypical choreoplexus papilloma. The weeks and weeks that followed, we were inpatient, and that is when we first found out about the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation through their very generous financial assistance through the Butterfly Fund. Um, it was after this and after many weeks in the hospital and Connor's return home to begin his recovery that John and I decided we would participate in the 2018 Starry Night Walk as a way to get our feet wet in, um, in a pediatric brain tumor community and somewhere that we wanted to become more involved in advocacy um, and, and finding other support systems um, and families just like ours. Hi, my name is Lisa Kirsting and this is Maddie Kirsting. We have been a part of Starry Night for the last, I believe it's seven years. Uh, we are Team Miracles for Maddie in honor of you. <laughs> Maddie is a three-time brain tumor survivor. Uh, she was first diagnosed with ependymoma when she was a year old in 2009. Uh, she did relapse in 2018, again in 2019, and just recently had scans that are all clear. So we are moving again in the right direction, right? Yeah. And uh, we're very appreciative of Starry Night and the whole family. We love the camaraderie, uh, meeting all of the other star families and just being able to be with people that understand the journey that we've been on, right? Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that we like to uh, fundraise is uh, also, you know, it's through social media. Uh, we have gone to, uh, stood outside of uh, grocery stores and had like little booths set up to have people donate money. And we've also done, um, collections on street corners, you know, at the four, um, the four intersections, people collecting uh, cans, I guess they call it canning, I forget what it's called. And uh, we've been successful in doing that. And we just have a really 
large support group that is really backing us and trying to do everything we can to really help raise funds and find a cure for our kids. Uh, so we really hope that, um, you know, you would can join us in the fight to cure the kids and help raise the money needed to make that happen. So thank you so much and have a great day. And so we intended to go to that 2018 Starry Night Walk as a survivor with a, a toddler who was thriving um, and, and a beacon of hope for others who were going through a similar situation. Unfortunately, two weeks before the 2018 Starry Night Walk, during Connor's routine three-month MRI post-surgery, it was found that he not only had regrowth um, in what was thought to be a benign tumor, but that it also spread to multiple locations in his brain and spine. And so we went into the walk in a, a very different uh, mentality. It was just John Connor and I, and we, we were there as zombies kind of observing and um, not really knowing what to expect. And that, that first walk um, was incredibly uplifting and um, a memory that I think John and I hold on to um, near to our heart. We met some families and heard stories um, that are, we're still friends with them, very close with them today. We have supported each other through this journey. Um, and it provided us with hope for all that was to come. Um, we started Connor's chemo two days after the walk that year um, and really knew that the road ahead was gonna be a rough one. Um, and so that was our intro to the Starry Night Walk. Um, and we knew we just had to keep coming back year after year. Um, no matter how things turned out um, in Connor's journey. And we are incredibly thankful and blessed that after um, 10 months of multiple different chemo treatments and um, protocols, three stem cell transplants, um, he's doing very well um, right now. And the 2019 Starry Night Walk, um, we showed up with not just three people, but a very large community of family and friends that support us through this journey. So we are very excited for the 2021 Starry Night Walk. Uh, fundraising has always been a challenge for me um, personally. And so this year we're really trying to become creative, think of ways that we can get out to more people um, and, and keep the funds coming in so that the research can be done and families can be supported. So thank you very much for including me in tonight's kickoff. And I look forward to meeting many of you, hopefully in person or virtually over the next couple of months. Please invite anyone you know to be part of this community, part of this mission, part of the Starry Night Walk. Um, it's an incredibly powerful event um, and, and we look forward to growing the community of supporters every year. Thank you. Wow, that's a lot of emotion for one evening. By now, I know all of you are committed, are making your plans, and are ready to register right now. So hold on. We're not quite done yet. Somebody said there was going to be entertainment on this show tonight. Through research and support, so many of our stars are now surviving and thriving. And the journeys that they are on are inspiring and motivating others. I promised you we had some special entertainment tonight. And we do, we have two incredible performances that symbolize that thriving and symbolize that hope that others can give to kids on these journeys. It's my pleasure to introduce Molly Oldham, who will be followed by Beck Bradshaw. Thank you so much to the Pediatric Brain Tumor Foundation for inviting me to speak and sing today. My name is Molly Oldham. I'm a proud two-time brain cancer survivor, and this is my Starry Night story. In August of 2019, I was diagnosed with a tennis ball-sized tumor. My family and I later found out that it was brain cancer. On the day I was supposed to move into college, 
I was told that I had stage three anaplastic ependymoma. I took the semester off and I received 33 rounds of proton radiation therapy. I was told I was cancer free in June of 2020 and then later relapsed in January of 2021. Cancer has been really, really hard. Not only have I had to go through some incredible physical and mental hardships, but I've also had a lot of things taken away from me. But despite this, I've also been able to find some great silver linings. One of which was being able to work with an incredible nonprofit organization called Cancer Can Rock. They helped me record my own song. So I wrote this song called Mighty and Me with two other incredible artists and it's all about my cancer journey. Um, I think it's really important to know that when you go through cancer, you're gonna have bad days, obviously. Treatment's really, really hard, but you're also strong enough to have good days. And if you cry, then cry. There's nothing wrong with that. We're all healing at our own rate, and I think it's super important to remember that. So, without further ado, this is my song, Mighty and Me. I remember a time when life was just birthday cake and tire swings. Summer camp and water wings. A I can just make it through the visiting hours Smile and thank them for the flowers So that's the girl they see Everybody tells me I'm so brave Cause I make the most of what I got But can't I have a moment when I'm I can burn. I'm keeping every chapter in my story. No one else can fight this for me, but I am not alone. All the people standing by my side through every checkup and exam. They never asked me to be
Hi, I'm Beck Bradshaw, and in 2014, Mrs. Grunsfelder asked my mom if my band, Chapter One, wanted to play at the first ever Starry Night Walk in Chicago. We've been playing every year since. And this is a very important cause to me because my cousin Kara is a star. And after playing this event for so many years, I was inspired by the interactions I had with the families and their kids, and just dancing with them and having fun to write the song, These Lights. I wrote it as an anthem of hope and remembrance for the stars. And it made its debut in 2019 at The Walk. And last year, even though we couldn't be together, Chapter One held its own event where we played the song, had our own lantern lighting, and a fundraiser. And this year, we are looking forward to seeing everybody and just having a fun event in person. What incredible talent we have on display here tonight. And if you're not inspired by now, 
Well, let me just say thanks for watching. Seriously, though, we cannot thank you enough for joining us for this evening and for your continued support to the PBTF, our stars, and their families. Now let's go out and shout it from the mountaintops and on social media, of course, about your commitment to walking to cure childhood brain tumors. Let's let everybody know. Let's use Brain Tumor Awareness Month to let everybody know that on Saturday, October 2nd, we're walking for a cure. Let's get registered. Let's let your team know. Let's get, let's get excited. Let everybody save that date. And if you want to start a Starry Night in your own community, please do not hesitate to reach out. We would love to help you get that started. So lastly tonight, I want to say thank you to all of our team here at the PBTF and of course to all of our incredible volunteers. We could not do what we do without them. So thank you all very much. We appreciate you so, so much. And that officially kicks off Starry Night 2021. Let's make it one of the best years ever. Thank you for joining us. And on behalf of everyone at the PBTS, good night. See you on October 2nd.